Hi, this is Jamie Davis from Light Reading, coming to you from Shenzhen. So I've managed to pull aside Peter from the GSMA Intelligence Unit to have a quick chat about 5G. So Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. So just to start things off with a nice sort of broad big picture question. Right now, what does 5G actually mean to you? And what, what are the use cases and developments that you're sort of keeping an eye on over the next sort of 24 months? Yeah, I think 24 months is a good way to frame this, right? Because right now we're obviously in the, the very early phases, right? You remember yeah. it wasn't long ago that we were all talking about 2020 for 5G. It's 2019 yeah. <laughs> and we're already into a couple launches, whether or not they're commercial, depends on who you talk to, right? So it's this time where I think we're looking to see how it develops and probably pushing back a little bit on this who's first, we're a little bit before someone because it's still fairly early, right? In terms yeah. of use cases though, right? I think 24 months is a great way to think about it because obviously the first use cases heavily focused on some of the consumer stuff, EMBB, yes. what you can do there. And so I think from that perspective, obviously the interesting stuff is what you can do with 5G that you couldn't maybe have done before. So maybe with AR and VR, cloud gaming, they're getting a lot of interest, right? And then obviously the fixed, the fixed applications. But going back to the way that you framed the question, I think 24 months makes sense because then we can begin to see a bit of what takes place on the enterprise. Uh, and what, and obviously there's trials out there and demos, but also how the carriers market this to the enterprises because okay. our research, when we go out and reach out to those enterprises about things like IoT, they're like, yeah, 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 5 is great. What will you do with it? Oh, not quite so sure, right? So I think there's still a lot of education out there. Okay, okay. And it's, it's interesting there, you've mentioned a couple of the new technologies and obviously they're going to be heavily reliant on 5G. So when you're looking at artificial intelligence and IoT and anything to do with the cloud, I mean, how does that change or influence the security dynamic of 5G and the, the sort of the connected world of tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's, it's something that the whole industry is grappling with, right? So, so let's think about IoT and let's just think about how 5G is being built in yeah. general, right? So IoT, to some extent, obviously, if we think about IoT for anything, not just, not just for 5G, but recognizing that 5G brings a lot more IoT capabilities, you have a lot more endpoints you have a lot more pieces to the puzzle, right? Because I think people think of IoT just as those devices out there, right? But there's those devices and there's the gateways and there's the platforms. So many more pieces there, which would bring in a lot more threat vectors, right? At the same time, if we think about how 5G is gonna get built from virtualized technologies, using some open yes. source tools, that also introduces some new ways that operators, vendors, we all need to think about security. And, and if you think about it though, We've all been talking about 5G as transformative, as a critical infrastructure. And when you think about something like that as a foundational technology for the yep. transformation of enterprises and society and digitization in general, well then security becomes really something that, that's top of mind for, for everyone. Luckily, tools like AI uh, can, can help with how we think about things like security mitigation, but it's important to recognize that regardless of any of the technology thing, what you can do with AI, it's always about processes, about people, you know, over and yeah. over and over again, I think we need to remind folks that one of the biggest issues with security is really just the processes and how people put them to use. And then moving on to more of the consumer sides now. So obviously consumer, like you mentioned before, it's going to be one of the big first use cases. Yeah. Um, I mean, how do you see that market developing? I mean, are there any particular areas or regions that are getting you excited? Yeah, I think I think in what we've seen is one of the really cool parts of 5G, at least at least from my perspective, is you see the different regions that are picking up early having yeah. their different focuses, right? So the US, somewhat fixed, somewhat mobile, Europe looking more at Industry 4.0, Asia, which you see out of Korea and here in China, as well as Japan, more focused on you know, the, the consumer side of things. But the number one most important thing to anything on the consumer side of things is obviously going to be the availability of devices. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and so that was the big question mark, right? Are we going to see consumer 5G devices? What will the price points be? The nice thing is we started to see some insights into that at Congress. Right? If you go back to February Mobile World Congress, there were a bunch of launches. A lot of them pretty expensive, right? We're looking at, yeah. at, a, at, at a premium to even the top tier. I think it was 20% premium or more to some of the top tier, but it's early, right? So not too surprising. We've seen some vendors come with sort of mid tier, so they're already expecting that. But I think the thing to remember there is operators will be very incented to get those devices into the hands of consumers, yes. Yes. to get traffic on those networks, to get consumers moving. So I think there's a big incentive to, to get those devices into the hands of people. Perfect, perfect. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but I really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you for much. taking a couple of minutes. Thank you.